anarchy. A dirty word with an aggressive agenda, yet certainly a system worth saving. Think for a second where in public schools you may have heard a single positive connotation or portrayal for the system where men are in control and women's decisions and voices are secondary. Black Lives Matter, as of today, is a dead movement, and the first thing that popped into my mind as to the why, well, among other things, was that a lot of the movement was frankly run by feminists, unstable feminists. Most feminists are this way. Combine that with black aggression being higher than whites as a whole, and well, one can connect two and two. Throughout your education, you will have been fed a grim history of what men have done through the centuries. You'll be told that straight white men are worse than the Nazis. You'll be told nothing good about your sex, your race, or your orientation. But I'm going to tell you something good, and it is, if the patriarchy exists, women should be grateful for it. It is what took us to space. It is what built roads, it built roads. It is what built the internet. It is what protects and provides for women. Uh, if it exists, thank God it does. Thank God for the patriarchy, says Milo Yiannopoulos. Quite a big step from where he, and myself included, once stood. We realize that the cult of equality and egalitarianism must be dismissed. Now, for the record, I completely subscribe to the theory that everyone should push themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually to become superior in all of their standards. That still does not equal equality, however. To observe Sweden's cuckoldry, well, anyone with even a basic understanding of gender relations can see the toxic fruits born by gender equality. The women of Sweden, which has been ranked the fourth most gender equal place on earth, have aggressively pushed for this equality. And as observed by Professor Jordan Peterson, every place where socially engineered gender equality becomes more prevalent, the differences between men and women intensify and become even more pronounced. This is also observable through the right-wing populism sweeping the West, as traditionalism is becoming fetishized and, of course, pathologized by the left, and right-wing movements even the more mild ones are becoming more relevant in Italy, Sweden, Hungary, and the United States. To understand ourselves, many species on Earth treat the female as the more exalted of the two genders and put precedence on her for reproduction and biological survival. Man has a very different mission, though. Man must take said biological heritage through evolution use it yet transcend it just look to youtube google facebook and their utter worship of the female for their xx chromosomes and now their gender bending allies these groups are anti-western patriarchy anti-traditional religion as they come islamic patriarchy however is held in adoration and we'll come back to that for people of faith, the word of God is very clear. Your desire will be for your husband, but he will rule over you. This is in Genesis 3.16. This was far from some trivial law that God put forth to mankind, as if any law from God was trivial. It was not to make her days miserable and intolerable, but a very sacred commandment to be held and understood regarding the dire consequences if diverged from. Women long for a man to be guided, kept in check, and ultimately dominated by him. And these aren't just the words of some famous pickup artists like quote-unquote known misogynist Rouge V. <laughs> the power that he holds over her heart is not to be taken lightly. The man who damages and toys with it is to blame for the pain that she carries afterward more often than not because he is given authority and dominion and he has abused power. 
It is the fault of women, ultimately, when the child-rearing has failed. But when law and order fail, and damaged women are all over the place, left and right, the men have failed in their task and must redeem things immediately. At the heart of almost every feminist is an indoctrinated child, a woman who has suffered repeated emotional and physical abuse at the hands of a malevolent Chad, or a Chad that even failed her completely, yes, even her father if he is abusive, negligent, or cucked. After all, Batman did not date Wonder Woman because he was a champion of women's rights. Batman dated Wonder Woman because he was the final boss of the Justice League, who despite having no superpowers, displayed that he was capable of one-upping or even defeating the Green Lantern, the Flash, and even Superman himself. To observe recurring patterns, famous anthropologist J.D. Unwin studied 80 tribes and six civilizations, and every last one of them failed when the sexual freedom of women came about. The desire for these women to not only aggressively test their limits in an attempt to push men in dominating the culture once again is always fierce, but the women, once they have their equality, even dominance, are reluctant to give up their newfound power and are more willing to latch on to the invaders who have retained their masculinity as their husbands and mates. Comparing that to the modern West, this is most pronounced in Sweden and Germany, where the men not only see their demise as merited, but brought about by the women who have repeatedly voted to expand the state to fill the husband's void that they have been deprived of. They long through this masculine energy found in the aggressive expansion of Islam. The men of Islam do hold their masculinity to be one of the highest values. But it is neither tempered nor healthy for their societies as they don't view women as complementary partners that they are to lead and love but as property, mere servants, and even slaves much of the time. The negative side of masculinity in Islam has emerged as simply tyrannical and out of pure belief for their holy texts. Israel's darkest dynasty was under the house of Ahab and his wife Jezebel, who not only acted as a co-regent with him during their societal decline, but stayed and ruled much of the country after his death. Definitely something worth noting in the story of how King Jehu deposed and slaughtered her, her heir, her priests, and much of her government when he specifically had her killed. It was two eunuchs that mighty Jehu called to and riled up outside of the palace to grab their own queen and throw her down from the second story window. My point being, the decline was spearheaded, among other things, by a de facto matriarchy. I understand this as well. Many of these circumstances involve situations where hostile invaders like the Viking armies made it a point to wipe out the men of the tribe with swift and brutal calculation because they knew this to be a foolproof method that would either result in a de facto matriarchy or a complete submission of the women to their own conquerors. 
one of the biggest reasons that Christianity was so successfully assimilated into the West, effectively extinguishing worship and tribute to the elder gods, is not because the Roman pantheon, or the Nordic pantheon, or cult of Mithras, or cult of Horus, lined up just right in every capacity to replace them. No. The element that lined up perfectly is that Western pagans were still very patriarchal, and the patriarchy of Christianity was very easily understood, so there was no confusion as to who was to rule, who instilled order, who God delegated this type of wisdom to, and the rules that did not treat men and women as equals, but two partners who mutually serve each other. To be frank, women's unhappiness is at an all-time high in America, even though their children likely won't die, and they have a, I believe it's less than 1% chance of dying during childbirth. In fact, ever since the sexual revolution, women proving that their liberation from what God biologically instilled in them has been a sad path to follow. Since they were liberated from their initial responsibilities as wives and mothers, all they've done is proved my hypothesis, my point, my easily observable statement that they were far happier with the pain of being barefoot and pregnant rather than alone and wealthy. Same thing in their marriages, where they are told to control their husbands and be the boss. The most terrifying part of it all is that if this de facto matriarchy were reversed, we'd be the first society to make it happen. America has been the first society to do many things in world history, but can the radical agenda to reverse the sexual revolution be achieved? It would require a massive reduction of women in prominent power positions, public and private. The abolishment of the 19th Amendment of the Constitution, a very high incentives for couples to marry and have children, a complete slashing of the effective welfare programs that they are eligible for, and bringing back social stigmas, not because they're inherently healthy, but to simply reverse the aggression that has been brought against the nuclear family and the push to normalize deviance. And this is the bare minimum. It truly is up for Westerners to reinstate the patriarchy in their respective nations at this point in time. Even the symbolic victories are enough. And yes, I'm calling on you as well, young ladies. I know you guys are out there. Italy's right-wing populism has skyrocketed in the event of their latest election and the worst example itself, Sweden. Their right-wing party is now the most popular party in their own country. Regardless, I myself highly doubt that a patriarchal society can be reinstated without things getting a little hairy or even flat-out violent. But I've been wrong before. Following the return to a Christian society, this is the best place to start. West is best. Deus Volt. <laughs>